This December, we're releasing our first major roadmap update, which we're calling For Science. Well, it's almost here. Time to talk about it. Hello, everybody, and welcome. When I planned this video, I wanted to do a It's December, so where is the update joke in the beginning, but the official launch date for the first content update for Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0.20, also called For Science, has now been set to December 19th, roughly a week before Christmas. I thought this would be a good time to reflect on what we have learned since the announcement made by the game's creative director Nate Simpson back in October at the Space Creator Day. If you missed that, I recorded the entire presentation and afterwards Nate was kind enough to sit down for an interview with me. You can check it all out by following the links up here and in the video description. But in this video, while I'm showing off this Concorde I've recently built, we're going to explore a bit more details of actually playing for science in Kerbal Space Program 2 by highlighting five things to expect from the coming update. Which is coming when exactly? We're not gonna want to be working over the holidays. Yeah, it looks like the team is keeping their word. And I'm certainly going to review for science, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you are interested in that. Until then, let's start with one of the big features that was missed ever since KSP2 came out as an early access release. Reentry. Up until now, you could brute force error break anything anywhere since the thermal system was not implemented yet. This is going to change with version 0.20. We already talked about this in a previous video in general. Link in the video description. But over the course of the past few weeks, there was a trickle of new information over at the Kerbal Space Program forums and on the social media accounts of the game. We got to see a couple of screenshots as well as a video showing a crew capsule getting toasty diving through the upper atmosphere. Some people were not completely happy with how the effects in the footage looked. I believe the word used by many was too static, but it's still a work in progress, so maybe this gets improved until the release in a few weeks. What we also got was a preview of heat shield charring effects, and those were universally well received. I hope they don't tie this into the amount of ablative material left on the shield. I remember a mod for KSP1 where that was the case, and when you reduced ablator to reduce payload mass, because you knew for the type of mission you're planning it won't be needed, the heat shield then looked black as if it got already burned. It should be rather based on how long the part has been exposed to what amount of heat while screeching across the atmosphere. Oh, and while you look down from your burning hunk of metal, you might notice something else. Biomes are back. It wasn't completely apparent if KSP1's biome system would make a return after the sequel began its life as an early access game, but after a couple of statements ba made by the developers, it is pretty clear. Yes, biomes are back. These were very important in KSP1 for segmenting a planet or moon into different areas. Ocean, shores, lowlands, midlands, highland, poles, whatever. Each area would yield additional science points. Basically, the game required you to pack some science experiments and go on a trip to discover new areas and then click a few buttons to generate science points, which in turn can be spent in the tech tree to unlock additional parts to build more sophisticated sophisticated spacecraft, which seems to be exactly the same gameplay mechanic that developers of KSP2 have settled on. This will rub people the wrong way that have asked for a more involved and engaging process of conducting experiments than just find a new biome and press a button. But while this core principle appears to remain the same as with the original game, the execution is supposedly better by enabling easier science collection. As fun as KSP1 was, is, gathering science is a bit of a chore. First, you don't really have an indicator in a stock game when you have a new science collection opportunity, unless you have mods installed. My favorite mod, Kerbal Engineer Redux, can display the current biome in a UI element if you configure it accordingly. But even if you recognize you are in a new area, you still need to click all the science experiments and perform each separately, unless you have set all your science experiments to an action group. Both of these things are now easier in Kerbal Space Program 2 once For Science is released. An indicator will tell us when a new experiment opportunity is available. 
and a perform all available experiments button spares you the hassle of having to click through all your science parts or saves you from wasting an action group on this. According to people that have actually played for science already, this shapes up to be a big quality of life improvement for all players. That means that probably the most brain power you have to invest in for collecting science is how you build your vehicles and where you put that which I'm going to talk in my next item about. Science parts. We have seen a couple of science parts in the preview material that was made available after the Force Science announcement. From what I was able to find out since then, there are going to be additional colony science parts once that part of the roadmap is being released. Also, science experiments are going to take different amounts of time to complete, which will be made clear to the player in the research app of the user interface. How much time? How much of a difference? That is yet unknown and we will probably have to wait for the update to come out to really find out. Also, you might remember that some parts in case P1 needed a specific state to be in in order for them to be able to collect science, like the atmospheric sensor is not working in a vacuum, etc. This will also be the case for case P2 science parts. For instance, there is going to be a crude science part called You Dunk It that requires to be immersed in liquid for it to work. So these experiments are going to be familiar for experienced players of the original but still different in some specific ways to hopefully be interesting enough. If they work how they should. Which brings me to my final point today. Bug fixes. Yes, while For Science is heavily focused on new gameplay content, a lot of very much needed bug fixes are also, hopefully, coming our way. The latest 0.15 patch improved on many things, but unfortunately also reintroduced a severe bug in vehicle construction, which I like to call the floor hugger. Well, actually, I don't want to call it anything, I don't want it to be there in the first place. But apparently, when copy pasting parts of a vehicle and later trying to load the saved craft, you will end up with everything in a pile on the floor. Not cool. And also something we thought was already solved in the past. Maybe this is a different issue causing this same behavior, but in any case, the game still has a lot of rough edges and needs quite a bit of maintenance still. And yes, I am aware it is in early access, but having regressions, defects that return after already being fixed, is a bad sign for software quality in general. Still, if we compare where the game started in February 2023 and where it is now, the development team has brought it a long way from then, with still quite a distance to go. Alright, those are my 5 things that we can expect in the coming For Science update that should be out on December 19th, if all goes well. If you believe I've forgotten some items here, check out my 9 reveals about KSP2 science update video. I talked about other things that were already known back then, like the improvements to wobbly rockets that the developers want to implement. But since we don't have anything new to report in that regard, I don't want to rehash something I already talked about. Do you agree with my approach? Let me know in the comments down below or join me on my Discord server, where we have gathered a fine group of like-minded space nerds and KSP fans. And in regards to KSP2 for science, I said it before and I'll say it again, this update will show whether or not the game really has a chance to truly succeed the original. With the science mechanics, it will finally be elevated from a mere sandbox to an actual game, if the developers manage to nail it. I really hope they do, because Kerbal Space Program deserves a modern platform to grow upon into new things, including colonies and interstellar and whatever will come next. So as I said before, I hope for all of us Christmas comes early. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.